Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Before we introduce our guest, Diego Tchecki, we're going to talk about this great show we did last week with the one only original Alan Greenfield. And you know, with Alan, you just say talk and you walk away for a week. Yeah, there's no stopping him once he gets going, that's for sure. And if you do, then uh, don't expect to come back from where you left off. So (laughs) he's very, very stream of consciousness person. And uh, like he says, he likes to come at the whole UFO topic from right angles to the mainstream. Very, very somewhat what I would call fringe, although I think he might dispute that. Well, Alan and I first got started in considering other alternatives to UFOs back in the mid 60s. We had this meeting at one of the hotels in New York City on New Year's Eve. Now, at that point, we were underage. We couldn't drink or we could, but I didn't drink and Alan didn't either. We just talked all night every time he came to New York. And this time is where we propounded the alternate reality theory, suggesting that UFOs, because we always see them near Earth or on Earth, not in space, maybe come in from a parallel universe or dimension. That's where it started for us. Of course, other people picked up on it. Well, I think that's really actually forward thinking. It's my favorite hypothesis because I just like the way that it works. It it adds a whole new greater dimension dimension to the whole aspect of existence for everyone. But we can't always go with, say, just what we think we like the most. I think we have to also look at what seems to make the most sense. And Alan, I love talking to him, but he just didn't want to acknowledge the practicality of considering that, well, they we know about this universe and we know that there's stars in, out there and that every star has planets around it now, pretty much that's a known fact now, not just a few, but pretty much every star we look up at has a planetary system around it. So the chances of it coming from another star system seem much greater than just sort of an idea that we haven't even proved even exists yet. And and then he was talking about the estimate of the situation. That was a real shocker. Like that he had actually had a copy. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that he's really valuable in the field from a cultural perspective because of the fact that he does come at it from what he calls a, you know, a right angle to the mainstream. It forces us to look at the situation and go, well, what if? Could it be? Maybe that's the case. We don't know for sure. So why not? Diego, I wanted to ask you, have you followed anything of what goes on in ufology in the USA? Yes, uh, mainly about the Tic Tac UFO and uh, all the stuff that's coming after it. Well, this is, of course, something, I guess, to look at. Alan just looks at other possibilities for everything. And if you have a chance to listen to the show, see what you think. In any case, you are the author of a new book from our friend Philip Mantle's Flying Disc Press. And this is what I'm really interested in because we are so focused heavily on U.S. and U.K. And you've got this book called UFO Contacts in Brazil. And we forget a lot of things are going on there. But before we cover some of the cases and what your feelings are about it, can you tell us your background, how you got involved in this? Yeah, sure. Well, I always say that it went... Since I started to read, uh, I, I read two things. Comic books, Spider-Man, X-Men, something like that, and UFO magazines. Well, in Brazil, we just had the Revista UFO, UFO magazine Brazil. When I was eight years old, uh, I saw something in the sky uh, that was not uh, a helicopter or airplane or balloon. It was in 1982. And my father was a Brazilian Air Force pilot. So I live a part of my life in Air Force bases in Brazil. I knew what was a, what an airplane and a balloon and a helicopter was, looks like. So when I saw it in Rio de Janeiro in 1982, I became more interested on UFOs. And then 
uh, when I moved to Brasilia in 1994, I started to research at, like a ufologist. Uh, I started to research my own cases and I became part of a group here in Brasilia and then I met uh, AJ Javier and uh, became part of the heavy, uh, UFO magazine Brazil. Well, now it's past, it's already past 22 years, so I'm studying UFO for 22 years so far. Do you care to mention what you do in the real world for work? <laughs> yeah, my real world. Well, I work at uh, National Confederation of Transportation in Brazil. Is a private uh, association that deals deals with transportation in Brazil. Kind of like public transportation. Public and private uh, and government transportation. Yeah, we have uh, deals with government and uh, associations about transports in Brazil. All the kind of transports: uh, planes, uh, train, bus, uh, taxis, and everything. That's fairly interesting because up here in Canada, one of the places that UFO reports were submitted to was the Department of Transport Canada. So for quite a while, that's where all of the reports would get sent, whether they were from the RCMP or the Air Force or whatever, it would end up in the Department of Transport. Uh, I don't imagine that's the case down there. But I know that the government down there back in, I think, 2010, and you can maybe bring me up to speed on this if, if, I, if I don't have it quite right, but it seems to me that they actually said that they wanted the military and the civilian pilots as well as air traffic controllers to register UFO sightings with the National Aerospace Defense Command down there, and that that information would be stored in the National Archives in Rio de Janeiro and made available to researchers so have you what kind of progress has have they made or are have you been able to access this information is that all true can you bring us up to speed on what's going on there with that that particular program yeah that's true it's like a resolution of a, a ministry of air force in brazil it was in 2010 that uh, all that say that all the pilots, private pilots or military pilots, uh, have to report any kind of UFO that they see uh, or they watch in the, in the sky. Uh, and these reports, after being studied, uh, they were sent to National Archives in Brasilia, not in Rio, in Brasilia and then put on on the digital files so anyone can access it on the uh, national archives in in of brazil but uh, the the real world is very very different of it uh none of the not uh, all of the pilots report it because if they do they have been they have been interrogated by some officials they have to go to a doctor to see if they are okay, and they have to make some tests to fly again. So many, many parts, and I know that because they tell me so. Uh, we see something in the sky that's it's unusual, that's a UFO. They prefer simply don't tell, don't, don't tell anybody. Very interesting, because that's what was going on in the United States up here uh, as well. And in, I think to some extent in Canada, where uh, there were regulations for reporting UFOs uh, in the Air Force and even uh, within the civilian, uh, the, the civilian air transport services. I got to break it here. Okay. Okay. Shago, Gene, Randall, yeah, you're yeah. in the Paracast. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, 
all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great t-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Tahibo Tea Club's original pure Pau Arco Super Tea comes from the only tree in the world that fungus doesn't grow on. So it naturally has antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-infection, anti-inflammation, and anti-parasite properties. But maybe more importantly, Tahibo Tea Club's original pure Pau Arco Super Tea builds corpuscles in the blood which carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer happens to die in oxygen. The tea is great for healthy people and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. Tahibo Tea Club's original pure Pau Arco Super Tea is only $34.95 plus shipping. Order now at ShopSuperTea.com or call 818-984-6100. That's ShopSuperTea.com or call 818-984-6100. ShopSuperTea.com. Complement your health with hemp-derived cannabinoid oil. We've always believed that the closer to Earth, the better it is for our bodies. Our hemp-derived cannabinoid oil is phytocannabinoid-rich, full-spectrum, and organically grown. Finally, hemp made easy, clean, and effective. GCNHemp.com or call 877-878-4203. That's right, we cut through the red tape. It's now available at GCNHemp.com or call 877-878-4203. Jake was in big trouble with the IRS. He owed how much? $92,000. Ouch. And the IRS left no room for Jake to breathe. They put a lien on my house, took all the money out of my bank account, took money out of my paychecks. So it was a nightmare. He needed help fast. I figured that all these companies were the same until I called federal tax management. You could just tell they knew what they were talking about. Right then and there, I felt like I had some hope. Stop the liens, levies, and garnishments fast and qualify for one of several special IRS programs that could reduce or even eliminate your tax debt. So, how did it go for Jake? They did what they said they would do. They came through for me. I ended up saving an unbelievable amount. I was so jazzed. <laughs> I was extremely happy. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, take Jake's advice. Give federal tax management a phone call. If they help me, they can help anybody. Call the federal tax manager hotline now 800-503-8625 800-503-8625 what if you could cut your heating bills this winter with your existing wood burning fireplace and not spend thousands doing it you can with great wall of fire fireplace grates our u.s patented made in america wall of fire grates increase fireplace efficiency eliminate fireplace smoke problems and come with a 30-day money-back guarantee see our grates in action and get free shipping from wall of fire Fire.com or call 800-274-7364. Fireplace heat without fireplace smoke. Wall of Fire.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at the Paracast.com. That's news at the Paracast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Diego Chiquechi is the author of UFO Contacts in Brazil, and we're introducing him to the American audience. And he's, he's a great guy here, and I think he's going to bring a lot of stuff to the table. This book, by the way, is not a small book. It's a pretty thick book with lots and lots and lots of cases. Going back, I see here, to before the 1930s. Now, Chago, I wanted to ask you with regard to your studies here, a lot of, of course, those cases that we explore are people seeing something in the sky or close up contacts of themselves have been considered fringe events but obviously you've got a lot of them why did you decide to focus on contacts yeah because i think that uh, the most interesting cases 
when you see something in the sky, well, can be a UFO, but can be a, a satellite, uh, can be an airplane, let's say, uh, a small light that makes some uh, incredible uh, speed and stop. You cannot say that it's a uh, UFO or, or an alien a spacecraft. So in my book, I got more than 100 cases with a lot of details, because uh, I, I just want to tell what's going on in Brazil, what's, what we had since the, the past, from the beginning, pre-1930s, 2015, 17. So the, what I put in my books, the case is that we have much more than the, that uh, 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 unusual light in the sky. Now, in terms of the contacts you have in this book, would any be classified as a UFO abduction? Yeah, we have a lot of abduction cases in, in my book. We have some very known in the in, uh, United States, for example, Antonio Villas Boas abduction case. You are very familiar with, with that. But we have uh, many other cases that they are not so known in other countries, like bat abduction or Lucinda abduction, two types of abduction, very, very similar and very strange. Maybe we could just start with the one that you think is the most interesting to you. Well, it's very hard The fathers choose one of the sons. So <laughs> well, um, I think that Virginia case is amazing. It's like uh, Roswell. It's not as, uh, uh, I'm sorry to say that, but Virginia must be much bigger than Roswell. Uh, as we know so far, uh, we had the uh, aliens, got aliens lie alive and, uh, and the UFO crashed in Virginia, in uh, Minas Gerais state. But we also have the night of the UFOs that happened in 1986, when 21 or 22 UFOs were chased by uh, Brazilian Air Force pilots for more than six hours in our skies over plenty, a lot of cities. And also we have the Operation Plate in Portuguese, Operação Prato, where uh, UFOs were shutting lights uh, in people that got hurt and got anemia. And as, we, as far as know, we know, one of these persons died because of that. That's really interesting. Now, just before the last break, we had started on talking about pilot sightings, and you were saying, well, maybe some of the pilots, just like the ones pretty much everywhere else in the world for a while, were reluctant to report sightings. But now you've got this case where you said that Air Force jets were chasing a bunch of UFOs. Now, hypothetically, that information should be available in your national archives. Is it there? Yes, it is. It is. And we. Uh, we have the tapes of the the communication between the the control tower and the the pilots in the sky back that night. All these archives, all these tapes, just got to the Brazilian archives because we uh, pressure the Brazilian government to release all these documents. This case is very very important because for the first time, uh, an air force of any country came to the public and said that what we chase uh, was not from this planet. What we chase is something that we don't know. And of course, they didn't know what, what it was, uh, but was something solid, something uh, true that pilots saw from his own eyes and uh, radio, uh, rather uh, screams plot it as well so can we go into a little bit of uh, detail on this case uh, so what year did this take place then yeah this place this uh, took place in several cities of brazil in campinas in rio de janeiro São josé dos campos brasilia and sao paulo these five cities reported to see uh flying uh unusual lights in the sky and uh, when the slides came 
closer to airports, some fighters was travel to pursue and identify the, the UFOs. Um, uh, again, uh, so again, uh, about what year was this? In Sao Paulo, Campinas. Oh, no, the year. No, the oh, year. the year, the year, the year. 1986. Okay, so 1986. So we're not talking about necessarily slow aircraft from the Air Force, or even slow jets in 1986. We were talking about some pretty fast military jets. Do you know what, what uh, type they were? Yeah, they were. Uh, the Brazilian jets were F5, five, uh, F5 and Mirage. So they can oh. reach the speed of sound. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. The speed of sound. But the UFOs were much, much faster than them. Yeah, the F-5 Mirage is a pretty sharp-looking jet. They were like uh, top of the line back in those days, uh, uh, you know, right up there with the F-104s and stuff like that, that were even older. So pretty that that's pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the, the Air Force uh, jets of Brazil, they tried to pursue, but uh, the Air Force play uh, cat and mouse, you know, cat and dogs, the, the, the fights, one of the fights pilot uh, by Kleber Marinho was a lieutenant Kleber Marinho. Uh, he was fine. And at one point, he got five UFOs in his left and six UFO in his right. So he was chased by the UFOs and he's not chasing them. The UFOs was chasing the Jack Spy. Very interesting. I mean, for the people out there who like getting into the, some of the technical aspects of aviation, uh, if we're looking at a Mirage F-5, we're talking about a jet interceptor that can do 2,350 kilometers an hour. Let's break here. Okay. Diego Takechi is the author of UFO Contacts in Brazil. We're focusing on aviation-related stories right now with Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. Do the letters IRS give you anxiety? I'm Dan Pilla. I've defended people from the IRS for more than 40 years. My book, How to Get Tax Amnesty, created the tax resolution industry and is responsible for helping hundreds of thousands of people. It can help you, too. If you're a non-filer or facing IRS enforcement right now, your case is unique. You need real help, not cookie-cutter advice. My clients get my personal attention. Buy my book at danpilla.com and get a free consultation directly with me. That's danpilla.com. Let's start solving your tax problem right now. USA Radio News with Wendy King. In a historic vote that fell along party lines, the House Judiciary Committee approves articles of impeachment against President Trump. The mood in the hearing room was somber as the 40 lawmakers cast their votes. Aye. Aye. My vote is no. The first vote on Article 1, abuse of power. Mr. Chairman, there are 23 ayes and 17 noes. The outcome was identical for Article 2. No. Ah. Obstruction of Congress. The article is agreed to. The charges are similar to those the committee passed during President Nixon's impeachment process in 1974. The measures will likely be voted on by the full House on Wednesday. It would then go to a Senate trial, but the Senate majority is Republican, and they say they'll support President Trump. This is USA Radio News. Money! 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 Money. You gotta have it. When you need it, what do you do? If you don't have a rich uncle, 
Call Lending Tree. With us, hundreds of banks compete for your business, so you'll get loans with competitive interest rates, and in some cases, with no closing costs. So here's the deal. If you need money, call us. Do you want to refinance your current loan? Are you 62 or older and interested in a reverse mortgage? Then call Lending Tree now. 800-634-1315. 800-634-1315. We've closed over $250 billion in loans. We know what we're doing and can help you. Call right now for a free quote. 800-634-1315. 800-634-1315. 800-634-1315. That's 800-634-1315. NMLS number 1136. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with Reputation Defender. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with Reputation Defender. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with Reputation Defender. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Randall, why don't you continue that focus as we expand on these aviation events? Right. So what we're talking about here is a, a very fast turbojet interceptor trying to catch uh, some sort of an object in the sky that the only possible competition that it could be would be some other high tech air force like the US or Russia or, you know, one of the highly developed, technically developed countries here. And they couldn't even come close to these, you're saying. Yes. And uh, one particular thing is, is that sometimes the radar catch the UFO and the control tower said to the pilot, well, they are in uh, your left very closer to you but the pilot didn't see anything they were invisible to the pilot to the pilot eyes but the radar the radar can catch them so it's impossible to be to be an airplane from us or the former u u r s f so should be something the planet that's really interesting so this wasn't actually a radar visual did any of the pilots actually see the ufos as well Yes, yes. Uh, okay. many, we had uh, six pilots. Four of them saw the UFOs. Two of them not. No. Okay. But so it, they was tell them that they had the UFOs in their sights. Okay, so the, there was some radar visual then, and we're talking about military radar vi- visual in the late 1980s. So that's still pretty high tech radar. That's pretty reliable. Very, very interesting and. You were saying that you actually had to dig into the government a bit more to get all of this information. It's not like they were just saying, okay, here you go. Yes, we had to pressure and to push the government to release all the tapes. We have more than five hours of the the conversation between the pilots and the control towers of many cities reporting what they are seeing. And we had to force to pressure the government to release it. But one thing is, is still missing, and one thing is very important, the films, because we know that some of that fights, jet fights, had camera on it. Oh. So they, they recorded the UFOs, and they were still looking for this tape, this film. But the, the Brazilian force told us that uh, they don't have it, but uh, I don't believe them. 
what is your suspicion that that now this is sounding a lot like what goes on uh, in the rest of the developed world with these things is somebody will send up an aircraft they'll get some sort of gun camera footage it comes down and some mysterious people uh, take it away and that's the last anyone ever sees of it yeah I'm sure that they have because uh, one event in my life uh, before my, my my father passed away he worked at, at uh, A2, is like a uh, secret service of Brazilian Air Force. And he was divorced of my mom. And every Friday, uh, my brother and I, we, we go to my father's work. Always ask it to my father, uh, Dad, uh, show me what you have here about UFOs. Let me see something. Well, son, I don't have nothing here. Well, I keep pushing, pushing, pushing. So someday I asked it and uh, he told to the soldier, to a soldier, soldier, bring, uh, bring him uh, the two boxes that we have about UFOs. Well, I almost had a, had a heart attack. So, and uh, I got two boxes, brown boxes, full of reports and pictures of UFOs. One of these pictures was so, so clear, so beautiful picture of a UFO in the left side of an airplane. Seems like the pilot had took the picture and the UFO was no much than 200 meters of the airplane. And wow. It a, and now, it was a perfect, a perfect flying disc. Flying disc. Uh, okay, so where's these pictures? Everybody wants to know right now. Everyone who's listening is going, where are these pictures? Do you have them in your book? No, no, because this picture was never uh, released was never released so oh. that's why that's why i don't believe it when the air force say that they don't have it film picture or something like, because i saw that and that picture never was never was uh, published in anywhere you know what that's exactly what happens in this country people take photos of ufos and suddenly something happens with the negatives in the old days before we had digital they take the film to be developed and the frames are missing the ones that are critical some way or another this information is kept under wraps yes and, and i never saw this picture it was so amazing so i think it's the hard evidence uh, that ufos exist and we have been visited by them because what's so perfect is is a classic flying saucer with no windows like a metal uh, a bright metal like silver what's so clear that's what's so clear that it was impossible to be a fake and uh, we're we're telling we're speaking of something that happened in 1993 so there was no drones there's nothing like a computer design that we have today there's no photoshop back that time very interesting. It, this reminds me of, I think it uh, was the uh, twinning memo up here yes. from back in, uh, what was it, the, the 50s, I think, 50s, or the late 40s, yeah. and uh, where they were saying that, the, you know, the phenomenon is something real and not visionary, approximating the size of a disc, um, metallic in color, that sort of thing. So that's, that's like a second Air Force coming out and and well maybe not coming out because you saw the picture but it does your air force have an official position on ufos no the last time that the air force told something about it was it was 1986 that episode the official night uh, night of the ufos in 1986 after that they never go went to the public to say something they uh, release a, a resolution uh, that pl pilots had to report what they saw in the sky, but never went back to the, the, the press to say, well, we have been visited, uh, we have been studied, never, never anymore. I think uh, it's passing through uh, for so many troubles and problems, like political and economic and social, that the ufos is not in in their agenda right so it's like you're saying it's it's enough hassle for the pilots you know because they'll get a visit from some who knows who you know mysterious people within the within the structure but 
uh, even the people within the bureaucracy might find themselves in the same position if they start nosing around too much. So, you know, where does that leave us? It seems like we've both got these, you know, some small shadowy bunch of people, you know, group within the governments that do know what's going on, but doesn't want to tell anybody else. And if anybody else starts to find out about it, then they're going to come down on them. Yes, that's that's correct. Uh, I think that uh, just a few people know in Brazil uh, a lot about uh, UFO. I'm very sure, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, we still have a lot of reports, but these reports are not coming to, to the public. Now, I think, and uh, if I rem am remembering correctly, we have these citizens hearings on UFOs up here, at which point I think we had uh, some pilots actually come from Brazil down there and talk about these cases. And if I'm remembering correctly, one of them said they actually fired on one of these UFOs in their from their jets. Do you do you have uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. We had a, a pilot. Uh, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, was Lieutenant Moura, Moura, something like that. That he was prepared to shoot a UFO. Diego, we have a clock we have to follow, and then we'll continue. Okay, aiming at the UFO. Diego, Gene, and Randall, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon you'll need a plan and place to survive. Forget bunkers. You're not a live underground gopher. You need survivalist camps, the ultimate fully functional off the grid mobile survival bug out house that's well equipped and custom built to outlast any other RV or trailer. Bold statement, you bet. See them now at survivalistcamps.com. That's survivalistcamps.com. Trust your family survival to survivalistcamps.com. This is George Dory from Coast to Coast AM and History Channel's Ancient Aliens. We support the amazing energy, nutrition, and skincare products from Jeunesse. Jeunesse products are designed by leading doctors in their field with natural ingredients and even stem cell technology. These products help your body perform and look better. Shop Jeunesse at GCNLife.com or call 1-844-443-6637. GCNLife.com or 844-443-6637. Have you heard the warning from the dead doctors don't lie guy? I'm talking about Dr. Joel Wallach. He says if you have a four-inch medical chart, if you take prescription drugs for high cholesterol or high blood pressure, arthritis, joint pains, or other health issues, the medical profession is failing you. They're using you for an ATM machine. That's what he says. He has a free lecture revealing what pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know. There's been groundbreaking research and discoveries on how to effectively treat or eliminate over 900 different diseases naturally. And it's all in his free lecture called Deadly Recipe. You want it free? Call him toll free at 855-79-YOUNG. You ready? 855-79-YOUNG. Dr. Joel Wallach, the dead doctors don't lie guy says there's no reason why we shouldn't live to be at least 100 and have a great time getting there.
Would you like to get back that full head of hair from years past? Introducing Reveal from GCNLife.com. Beverly Hills dermatologist Dr. Nathan Newman invented Reveal, which contains polypeptides with natural botanicals and no parabens, sulfates, silicones, or dyes for a salon quality hair growth product. Reveal. Here's Dr. Newman. I have treated a lot of patients who lose their hair and they lose their confidence. We've created a unique set of polypeptides, which we call HPT6. The HPT6 contains the polypeptides from six different plants. The scalp infusion treatment should be used on wet or dry scalp. The Reveal hair care system is designed to be used for men and women alike. Get Reveal at GCNLife.com with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So try Reveal today at GCNLife.com or 844-443-6637. Plus a discount up to 25% off for Reveal at GCNLife.com or 844-443-6637. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Diego, before you continue with that story, I think of a book in the U.S. called Shoot Them Down that covers attempts to fire on ufos continue with that case please yeah it was uh if, I, if i'm not wrong what's lieutenant mora that back in the 19s he was ordered to shoot down a ufo uh in the skies of uh sao paulo and he pursued the ufo and he armed his uh weapon it was a fighter jet fighter and when he was ready to shoot his weapons weapons uh, didn't work so he tried to shoot a missile, but it didn't work. So I don't, I don't know if uh, he was able to, to shoot them down. So now we have a case of uh, Gene, like you were saying, where in the States, there was this, uh, at one point, there was a shoot down order, and as well in Brazil. Now, I, I wonder how that all works with the rest of the developed nations. Now, say in France, England, I wonder if that was a common factor across, say, like, you know, all the NATO and everything else of the allies to shoot these things down. Maybe a little bit irrelevant to the discussion, but I find it really interesting. Yeah, I heard that uh, in in United States, I think they they tried to shoot a UFO in in another county in uh, World War II. They tried as well, but didn't work it. Didn't they try that as well in the Belgian UFO wave there? The same thing was happening. We heard from pilots that would say they would they would uh, try to to catch up to the UFOs there uh, in F-16s and their instruments would suddenly go all haywire and not work until they backed off. Yeah, there's a lot of cases about it. A lot of cases in Belgium uh, happened in France, in in Germany, in the United States, in the United Kingdom. have a lot of I think they have some kind of a shelter or some kind of defense that make it possible to shoot them down. Just like they can shut down car engines and stuff like that. They seem to have this ability to, I don't know, beam in some sort of interference into the systems. But, you know, this is this is all really fascinating. And uh, I'm really glad we were able to cover some of that. But maybe we should uh, now turn to a couple of your uh, contact cases, because if we can't get the information necessarily out of the powers that be, you have found that there are quite a number of people out, in, uh, just regular citizens, who have come upon these cases and had these encounters, and maybe that's where we need to look if we want to find out more about what's going on out here in the public. Yeah, uh, in this book we have a lot of uh, interesting cases, and some some of these cases are not so pretty because uh, we have one of, of uh, these cases that a man uh, died after a contact with a UFO. It was a caso, a John Press's filho case that in 1965, if, uh, if I'm not wrong, not 65, 46, he was walking in, uh, in his city. He lived in a city, small city called Araciguama, Araciguama in Sao Paulo. 
and there's no electricity back the time in 46 and he was uh, walking down the street and he saw a ufo for some reason the ufo shot him a uh, bit of light in his shoulder and he started to feel dizzy and uh, a lot of pain and uh, in two hours his flesh was melting from his bones. It's like radiation, like in Nagasaki and Hiroshima uh, radiation. It happened in 46 in Brazil after a, con a, a, a contact with a UFO that shot him a beam of light. His flesh was melting and a week later he died. That doesn't sound like it's a, a particularly friendly contact then. So we have this whole range where people are experiencing these awful human injuries. And then they they range to, you know, the classic Antonio Villas Boas case where we, you know, we're having an encounter with a beautiful space woman. Yeah, the, the Villas Boas uh, was the first abduction case much before uh, Barney A. Bat Hill. It was in, in the 50s, and uh, he was abducted and forced, you know, forced to have sex with a beautiful alien female. And uh, Antonio Villas Boas then became a, a, a lawyer, and he never changed his uh, testimony. He always said that he had that experience and uh, he never wanted like uh, publicity of that. And his case was so amazing that it was investigated by many, many ufologists around the world. And no one could tell that it was a, it was a fake, it was, that he was telling a lie. Everyone believes that what happened to him was true. Speaking of, of uh, people who might be trying to hoax a case, though, uh, it seems that South America in general, uh, and Brazil in particular, that UFOs are almost, um, from a, a few of the people I've talked to over the years who've actually been there, it's almost uh, just like a, a, a taken for granted that they exist. They're like a, a daily way of life down there that people just know that they exist. And in the public, they're not ridiculed as much as maybe other countries. That's true. That's true. Uh, many, many Brazilians, they love, they love most parts of Brazilians believe that uh, UFOs are, are not from Earth. I'm not saying that they're from another planet. They maybe they can be from another uh, universe, a parallel universe. Uh, but here in Brazil, uh, we're not, not ridiculized it because of it. Uh, the, people, the people believe, and Brazil is so big, it's like a continent, and we have I don't many many cases that was never ever reported to us to, to Brazilian ufologists because happened uh, so a routine they happen every day in the north of Brazil in a, in a inside country of Brazil and this report never get to us never we never know about it. One but of the one of the messages that we tend to hear come from UFO contactees is that human beings need to be much kinder to the planet and to really be careful about our ecology because destroying the planet is going to essentially it's going to destroy us and that could be nuclear but it's also been environmental as well and of course recently we've uh, seen a fair bit on the news about the way that the government down there has authorized the uh, the wholesale burning and cutting and stripping of the rainforest, which gives us 20% of our oxygen on the planet. Uh, so this is kind of really tied in with the messages of the environment and to be better to the environment. Um, why aren't people down there listening then? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because uh, the, peop the, the, the few people that are in, have the power uh, to control our planet, they just want to profit and they want uh, to have the power and knowledge and left the rest of the planet in a shadow. 
I don't think that they want to. I think they 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 is much more concerned about their own uh, of than the the rest of the planet. And even the message from this the aliens that we have to to protect our planet and ecology stuff like that. I don't think that that people have this power. They want they don't want to share it or they don't they don't want to to change it. That's that's a fairly uh, typical problem there, uh, from what I understand. And, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong. That if you just don't listen to what the government says, you could find yourself in a lot of trouble. Like more so than maybe other countries, say in Europe or North America, just because of the way that they handle their economy and their power, like you are saying. Because the people who are out actually doing the clear cutting and the burning, they're just regular people who are being told what to do, I'm assuming. And if they don't obey orders, then they're going to find themselves in a lot of trouble, I assume. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be in an awful lot of trouble if we don't break. Diego Chiquechi is the author of UFO Contacts in Brazil. A lot more to explore. Pretty big book. Maybe we'll have to have him back soon to continue with this. With Gene and Randall, you're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Message and data rates may apply. Help! Seriously, I'm too young for hair loss. My hairline keeps creeping back. Receding? I've got this bald spot. Uh, it's thinning everywhere. I'm going to have to give up and shave it. Dude. Put down the razor, because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration expert, is about to give you your real hair back permanently. Don't ignore the signs of hair loss. Bosley is giving away an absolutely free information kit that reveals all the signs and a free gift card to anyone who texts KIT88 to 85850. Bosley will show you for free how great your hair could look. Using the latest technology, Bosley's solution to hair loss is permanent and protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Plus, since Bosley has new non-surgical options, you owe it to yourself to text now for an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off, no matter what level of hair loss you have. Text KIT88 to 85850. K-I-T-88 to 85850. Welcome back to the Paracast. The gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Whoa, some pretty interesting stuff happening in Brazil. Let's continue. Okay, so we can certainly look at the environmental messages from UFO contactees around the world. And Brazil is definitely, well, you know, pardon the pun, but it's a hot spot right now. So I don't know that there's anything that we can do about it. But I mean, should we be doing anything about it? Do you believe that these messages are actually coming from visitors from other worlds? Or is it just some sort of eco propaganda? Bro, I think that this message comes from the, the another world. We 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 are very selfish. 
the humankind is very selfish. We think that we are the center of the universe. We think that we are the only uh, intelligent race in the universe. As we think about it this way, uh, it's impossible to the next step. You must to give the next step of the evolution. But we have to change our minds. We have to think of, we, we have to change our thoughts. And we, and the first thing to do is open our minds and uh, believe that we're not alone in the universe. And that are other races in the universe that have uh, concern about us. And with, with, uh, if we mess up our planet, can make some trouble to another planet. So that's why they, they, they're trying to warn us. That sounds like the message from the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still, where Klaatu, <laughs> you probably saw the original one, where Klaatu comes down to Earth to give us the warning, straighten out or we're going to get rid of you. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think it is. I think this is very, very uh, plausible to, to happen. What other messages are the contacts, contactees bringing to us from their contacts down in Brazil? Besides the eco message, is there anything else? No, the, the messages are quite the same. To take care of the planet, not to destroy yourself, to keep the planet clean, something like that. I think they, the, the, as we live in, in the same planet, the message should be the same to everybody. This is really quite interesting uh, because, you, like Gene is saying, your book is not small. It's 580 pages here if we're looking at the one on uh, Amazon. So how many contacts are you talking about? And, and sort of out of those, how many of them actually get to interact with the aliens? It, it, when you're talking about contacts, are you just talking about in general, like where maybe somebody gets hit by a beam of light or comes upon a craft or has an interesting sighting or do you actually mean people who have received messages and been contacted by something claiming to be aliens well this book have uh as i said uh 580 pages more than 300 pictures and more than uh, 100 of cases with full of details these cases and in this book we have all type of cases we have uh, case of abductions. We have case of uh, people who received a message from alien beings. We have case of uh, people who died after a contact with UFO. We have pilot sightings, uh, the Virginia case. So this book shows uh, the Brazil uf ufology in Brazil uh, like it was never seen before. It sounds like a real definitive overview of what's been happening in brazil from so when how far back does it go in terms of the history yeah the first case we i report in this book happened in 18 1836 not 1836 uh and from after this dec decades uh, the 30s the 40s the 50s the 60s that's a lot of cases and until I stopped in the, this book in 2015, so we have four more years to a volume to. A volume to. Uh, okay, so I'm seeing one book here. Is that one volume? And you've got? A, are you saying you've got another volume coming out? Yeah, it's going to take a little while because it took two years to write this book. And uh, I'm still writing. I'm, I'm I'm writing already some cases that happened in Brazil, and uh, I'm probably gonna put in a in a second volume of this book. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Those two sound like they definitely are something that would belong on uh, my UFO library shelf for sure. How's the response been to it so far from people? I'm seeing here it's got five stars on the Amazon.ca site, so that sounds pretty good. Yeah, uh, the people uh, the people that uh, bought these books sent me some uh, pictures and and message in the Facebook or on uh, YouTube or Instagram, and they are enjoying the book. It's a very big book, a lot of pages to read, 
but uh, above all, above it all, uh, I think the people is gonna is like is enjoying, and uh, I think the people gonna like it very much. So, in terms of uh, now, we have South America, North America, Europe. We've got UFO sightings appearing all over the world, being pursued by the air force and military all over the world. Uh, it seems to me that people out there in the world by now ought to recognize that something is actually going on. And uh, back at the beginning of the show, we touched on, of course, this uh, Nimitz encounter case, which is some of the most recent. Uh, what's your perspective on that whole case? Well, um, I read uh, the book, uh, AD Dis Disclosure of... Uh, Oh, I forgot his name. Dolan? Dolan, Richard Dolan, yes. Right, this is the one he did with Bryce Sable, A.D. After Disclosure. Yeah, it's an amazing book. I read it, that book. And I believe in, in, in his book, he, he tells about three disclosures, uh, total partial and a, and a fake discovery, something like that. I think that we're going to experience a, a, a partial disclosure. Uh, the government could never uh, goes back to to tell that in the past what they what they had was a real alien contact. I don't think so. They're gonna do it. They have a lot to lose if they do that because people uh, have been uh, dismissed. People was uh, targeted like crazy, and uh, because of the the government. They said, no, you didn't see something like that. You saw something like another thing. And after the Tic Tac, the Nimitz case, I think that you're going to start, uh, uh, you know, it's not fast. You're going to start uh, uh, disclosure, control disclosure, first of all, American, American government and then the rest of the world. So well, I think they're going to. Go ahead. I think they're going to disclose it, but it's not that total. It's going to partial disclosure. You know, I wonder here, too, with there has to be some sharing of information on UFOs among at least certain governments. Why some other country wouldn't try to be first, especially Russia, China, Iran, get one up on the U.S.? I think that because uh, they're still looking for to discover or to try to find out what are the stuffs. They simply cannot say that, oh yeah, our, uh, our space uh, is full of some kind of spacecraft that we don't know, that we don't know where they, are com they come from. So it's very hard for government to admit that and uh, the space have been every day invaded by some kind of a UFO that they didn't know what belongs. So it's very hard to, to country to, to admit that. I want to go into this more about disclosure in our next segment and cover some of these contacts, some of the older ones, which might be very interesting. Diego is with us. A lot more to come. It's a pretty big book. With Gene and Randall, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. 
Hey everyone, Proactive MD has an incredible offer for our radio listeners only. Stay tuned for our exclusive offer that includes a free charcoal pore cleansing brush and free shipping. Proactive MD with prescription strength adapalene can heal and prevent future breakouts. Today, for just $19.95, we're offering listeners the three-piece Proactive MD system with free shipping, plus a free gift, the new charcoal pore cleansing brush. Get this exclusive offer by calling now, 1-800-583-8662, or go to Proactive.com and enter promo code radio. You heard right. Proactive MD plus free shipping and a free gift. The new charcoal pore cleansing brush. You'll get all this for just $19.95 and their 60-day money-back guarantee. You're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear or you get your money back. Call now. 1-800-583-8662. That's 1-800-583-8662. Or go to Proactive.com and enter promo code radio. Again, go to Proactive.com and enter promo code radio. Would you like to get back that full head of hair from years past? Now, there is Reveal. Beverly Hills celebrity dermatologist, Dr. Nathan Newman, took nearly a decade to develop Reveal from natural botanicals to return to a full-body head of hair. Reveal for men and women with a 30-day money-back guarantee at GCNLife.com or toll-free 844-443-6637. 844-443-6637. Reveal at GCNLife.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap, even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed; it's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon you'll need a plan and place to survive. Forget bunkers. You're not a live underground gopher. You need survivalist camps, the ultimate fully functional off the grid mobile survival bug out house that's well equipped and custom built to outlast any other RV or trailer. Bold statement, you bet. See them now at survivalistcamps.com. That's survivalistcamps.com. Trust your family survival to survivalistcamps.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So, Chiego, when we talk about disclosure, I kind of look at gradual disclosure that we are slowly becoming accustomed to the possibility that life exists not only in space, but possible intelligent life. I mean, there may even be microbes beneath the surface of Mars. So a more Earth-like, hospitable planet, this could be something that is really, really plentiful around the universe. People are probably more accustomed today to this possibility than ever. They've grown up with Star Trek and Star Wars and all these reality shows. And then we hear about a new exoplanet of which thousands have been discovered. So this Tic Tac stuff, the naval cases, suddenly it looks like the government has become interested in UFOs, even though we had Project Bull Book so many years ago. But of course, the question here is the first one is, do you think they're going to try to do it that way? They, are, they have already disclosed a lot to us. I don't think they're going to disclose, disclose uh, all they have. I don't think so. I think they're going to disclose what they think that, can, that can, they explain. Uh, for example, the case of Mento UFO crash. Mento uh, okay, case, Captain Mento, who died pursuing uh, a UFO. 
I don't think they're gonna say that the, he he's gonna uh, he was uh, chasing a referral because he's it's gonna be a, a failure because the government said that well he chased Mars the planet Mars. I think, I think they also perfect. said that Mantel chased a skyhook balloon. We were talking about that yeah. on our premium show last week on After the Powercast. Yeah, I think that they're gonna they're gonna release or disclosure what they think they can say. He would never tell us the the whole truth. You know, I think though that Gene, you make a really valid point, and and this is a good opportunity for us to talk mm -hmm. to someone who isn't from the U.S. or Canada. Tiago, do you know if the Brazilian Air Force has any kind of an agreement with the United States or NATO and European countries not to disclose UFO information? Well, I, I'm not sure if we have some agreement and I'm not sure if this uh, if they do, if this agreement is not to tell uh, something about the uh, UFO. But uh, the Virginia case is very curious. The Virginia case, well, we had that UFO that question in Minas Gerais, in Virginia City, the city of Minas Gerais State. We recover, the Brazilian army recovered the UFO and four aliens, two dead and two alive. And then the same week that that happened, uh, an American Buffalo airplane it's a bigger plane, uh, landed in Virginia Airport. This Virginia Airport is a very small airport. And in this airplane from the United States came from people from uh, U.S. government, U.S. Army, and NASA. And as far as we know, who, uh, those who investigate the case told to them that the Brazilian gave the UFO and alien beings to the United States. And surprise or not, some time later, the Brazil had the first astronaut in space. So I don't know if, if we exchange present, our present was from another world and you sent our first astronauts to the space, maybe? It was part of the agreement. <laughs> Interesting, yeah, because uh, the, the Brazilian government, as far as we know, they've they've denied any claims about being involved in the recovery of any extraterrestrial biological entities. But there's no question that something seemed to have happened there. I mean, they've even got a spaceship shaped water tower in uh, Virginia City. You know, so it's it's really well known that something happened there. I want to mention before we go on, we've also had Diego's colleague, A.J. Gavard, on the Paracast several times going into this case, and we always appreciate the updates. Go ahead, please. Yeah, we had uh, the most uh, new things uh, about this case that a sister of a soldier that died after a contact with one of these aliens, just after almost 20, 20 years after the, the, the case, she got uh, the report of the death of his brother. I was to, I, I'm talking about the policeman Marco Elise Cheriz. He was uh, a, a military police, police of the Brazilian army, and he touched the alien without gloves or any kind of protection. And he got very sick, very sick. And he, he died uh, uh, two weeks, two weeks uh, later uh, of his contact. And uh, he's, uh, he was buried in a, in a special, uh, in a special kind of, of, uh, Code that uh, not contaminates the area, like to seal him in something that has some sort of sealed unit. Interesting. Yeah. So no biocontamination. Yes, and uh, in a report of his death, it's just an infection, some kind of infection. So if it was an infection, why to burn him in some kind of? <laughs> 
in yeah. something that would not contaminate the area. That would be interesting. I mean, what, what, this kind of uh, reminds me of the Andromeda strain uh, a little bit in a way. I mean, if if he had some sort of an alien uh, organism, you know, a bug of some kind, whether it's a virus or a bacteria, that would actually be physical evidence. So yeah, I wonder if people, you know, <laughs> if it would be worth trying to dig this this person up and have, do a, an autopsy, like a real scientific one on them. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, Michael Lichares, he hadn't an autopsy. No one did it. In in, in Brazil, you, if you die in a suspicion kind, suspicion way, it's obligation to have an autopsy, and they and he hadn't. That is kind of suspicious in and of itself. It's almost yeah. like a cover up. Well, you can yeah, only and, say uh, then that you didn't need to have an autopsy because this person died of natural causes that would be an excuse yeah but in the report is he was not died because natural causes natural causes he died because of an infection an unknown infection well that at least in here in this country we have the center for disease control cdc and if there is any evidence of an outbreak of an unknown disease allegedly they come into play and they try to figure out what's going on. They worked hard with the Ebola virus, for example. We have Chiego, we have Gene, we have Randall, you're in. The Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you feel like many of us? All the distractions in the world taking our minds and focus off what really needs to get done day to day? Well, Jeunesse has a dietary supplement called Mind to help with mental distraction and it supports memory function. Go to GCNlife.com now to check it out. You're only at your best when your mind is at its best. Go to GCNlife.com or call toll free 844-443-6637. That's GCNlife.com or 844-443-6637. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. USA Radio News with Wendy King. Two articles of impeachment against President Trump were approved by the House Judiciary Committee. The resolution is amended as ordered reported favorably to the House. A full House vote is expected next week. An approval is also expected with a trial happening in the Senate sometime in January. President Trump claims Democrats have been trying to set him up for impeachment for years, but he says it's all backfiring. The polls have gone through the roof for Trump. Because people, especially with independent voters, and especially in swing states, I could show you numbers that nobody has ever seen numbers like this before. Washington Democrat Pramila Jayapal is on the Judiciary Committee. We're going to win the election if Donald Trump is running. She predicts his disrespectful behavior and cruel policies will sway voters. Those policy differences are for the election. If he ends up running, I believe we'll win. This is USA Radio News. America's founders knew power corrupts, and ultimate power corrupts ultimately, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's why they built in checks and balances to prevent any one group from seizing all power. And that's why our president is elected by a college of electors, to protect the rights of little states like Delaware and Wyoming against giants like New York and California. After all, our country is a republic, the United States of America, not the United State. Our states are independent, sovereign powers who created the federal government, not 
the other way around. And that's why all power ultimately lies in we the people and the states, not a central dictatorship of cronies. Did you know that? Thank God for the U.S. Constitution. Find out more how our amazing Constitution and Bill of Rights protect us, the citizens, against power crazed politicians in Washington. Help us take back America. Go to OurAmericanRights.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. I'm here with Scott Uceum, founder of OMG Tax. Tell us how your company helps our listeners out there who have a problem with the IRS. My team of lawyers, enrolled agents, and licensed tax experts remove wage garnishments sometimes in the same day. We even have reduced the total debt some of our clients were required to pay through what is known as an offer in compromise. Can you give us an example of somebody you help? Oh, can I ever. We have taken a $500,000 liability with the IRS Guess what? The client didn't pay a dime through the representation known as non-collectible status with the government. If you owe the IRS more than $10,000 and you want to see if it's possible to pay a lot less, call OMG Tax right now for a free tax-saving consultation. Call 800-486-8112. 800-486-8112. 800-486-8112. That's 800-486-8112. This is Robert Hastings, author of UFOs and Nukes, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Diego, as you probably know, there have been cases here where people have been hurt. The Cash Landrum case from 1980, Rendlesham Forest, where John Burroughs, who's been on the show, suffered from unknown ailments with some resemblance to possible radiation poisoning. As a result of this, he had to fight with the VA to get them to cover his treatment. Yeah, I know these cases. Uh, As I told, uh, we have the Jean Pesce Filho that that had uh, an encounter with a UFO that after that he he died. And we have have the the Karangejo Island case, case when two fishermen were fishing. And the UFO appeared over his boat after uh, exposure of uh, the light of the UFO. Two of these uh, fishermen died as well. It seems like a lot of these cases are happening down there, or that I should say so many of these cases are happening down in that area. That Do you think there maybe is some sort of, or has... Do you know of anyone who has theorized that maybe there is some sort of an alien base down there? I'm not sure. Uh, I know that Brazil has natural resource of a, any, any kind. We have minerals, we have water, uh, we have animals, we have biological animals and biological uh, environment that no one in the world has. I'm not sure if this is the reason that to, we have so many sightings and cases here, but we, we do know that we have some reports of UFOs or UFOs coming out and in of lagoons and rivers and in, uh, in our seas as well. Yes, exactly. And so that's why, you know, we get the people who theorize that there are alien bases and that they are underwater, some of them. And so that's when you mentioned these fish, the fishing boat, of course, that's near water. And it turns out that a lot of UFO sightings in general are near water. So it it kind of makes you wonder if there's a connection. When you were writing this book, were you able to see any overall pattern between the events that that kind of add up to something that we could put a finger on and say, hey, there's there's something interesting. We ought to look into that more. Yes, we have uh, in this book, we have a uh, uh, lot of cases connecting UFOs in water, coming in and coming in and coming out of lagoons uh, or rivers or sea. In Brazil, uh, Amazon and Brazil's uh, Northeast, and Brazil South. So maybe there's the alien base in this 
three re regions of Brazil. I don't know. But when I, uh, I was writing this book, this uh, X aspects got my attention. It is something to, to study, of course. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of this, because I, if, just as I run across things here, I'll just ask a couple of questions. But apparently back in 2014, there was some document, and you'll have to please excuse my pronunciation, but the uh, dossier Riolandia? Uh, from uh, apparently shows the appearance of UFOs in the city of Rio Landia on January 20th from 2008. Have you heard of this document? Yes, it's a very, very interesting case. It happened in uh, Rio Landia. It's a, it's a small city in Sao Paulo state. When people saw a UFO, over a, a plantation and after they see the ufo they went to the field and saw a huge circle mark it's like a crop cycle in that place but that's not uh, a draw on it the plants the, the vegetation was messed messed up just like something had landed on it and press all the grass in the floor. And, that, and, and since 2014 to 2017, as far as I know, uh, the plants would never grow again. They kept, you know, curve it, never grew up uh, too high again. Now, in the, in the document they're talking about that describes this case, I guess there is, according to at least one source here that there was a photo or a picture of this craft have you been able to track that down yeah i never uh, i have this this photo but it's not in my book because i couldn't find the source of this photo i could not identify the source to have sure that it was related with the case but i have the the photo of the place that was supposedly ufo had landed and it's a huge, it's a huge uh, area, uh, as the UFO must be more than two meters diameter. So it's a very huge uh, spaceship. So one of the things that tends to happen, um, at least up in here in North America, is that belief in alien visitation and even UFO sightings tend to correspond to people who actually have a higher education rather than a lower education. So it's a bit of a myth that people who are uneducated tend to be the ones who are reporting sightings and just don't know what they're seeing. Down in Brazil, I know that it's a struggle for education in parts of the country. There's some poorer parts of the country. There's some much more well-off parts of the country. But how well does education play into people believing in ufos there and accurately reporting ufos there well uh in brazil we have a multicultural population i think that the most part of the people of brazil believe in ufos no matter uh, high or lower education uh we have uh ministries we have uh former presidents we have uh uh, politicians that believe in ufos also we have agriculture agriculture uh, people that believe in ufo and they see this kind of ufos so in brazil uh we don't have this this division of people with much or, or less education that believe in ufos interesting okay so uh, um i imagine over from time to time you're going to get people who report things that are misinterpreted as ufos so say like back in 2013 uh there was a number of protests and uh there was an a newspaper down there that showed images of what was claimed to be a ufo but it turned out to be a drone used by one of the no local newspapers to take pictures of the crowds uh you know does do you get that the media down there uses ufos as a sort of a selling point for their stories 
and that there, you know, there's a lot of cases where, oh, it's a UFO, and and then you look, and well, it really wasn't a UFO; it was just something else, or just a story. No, the press in Brazil uh, just uh, published something about UFO, where it's something very important. Um, we have tabloids here in Brazil as well, and we have some uh, some TV channels that explore this uh, this phenomenon, but it's not uh, a very high, very very important uh, channels. So there's no much audience, uh, but the, the, the mainly uh, media explores when something is very, very important, like the Tic Tac and Nimitz, it was very explored here in Brazil. Uh, the, the media, Brazilian media, uh, tried to understand it, asked ask us, the apologists in Brazil. We got a break we, here, guys. But, Chego, Gene, Randall, you're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream, a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. Complement your health with hemp-derived cannabinoid oil. We've always believed that the closer to Earth, the better it is for our bodies. Our hemp-derived cannabinoid oil is phytocannabinoid-rich, full-spectrum, and organically grown. Finally, hemp made easy, clean, and effective. GCNHemp.com or call 877-878-4203. That's right, we cut through the red tape. It's now available at GCNHemp.com or call 877-878-4203. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with Reputation Defender. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with Reputation Defender. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771. For your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with Reputation Defender. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Jake was in big trouble with the IRS. He owed how much? 92 
$5,000. Ouch. And the IRS left no room for Jake to breathe. They put a lien on my house, took all the money out of my bank account, took money out of my paychecks. So it was a nightmare. He needed help fast. I figured that all these companies were the same until I called federal tax management. You could just tell they knew what they were talking about. Right then and there, I felt like I had some hope. Stop the liens, levies, and garnishments fast and qualify for one of several special IRS programs that could reduce or even eliminate your tax debt. So, how'd it go for Jake? They did what they said they would do. They came through for me. I ended up saving an unbelievable amount. I was so jazzed. (laughs) I was extremely happy. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, take Jake's advice. Give federal tax management a phone call. If they help me, they can help anybody. Call the federal tax manager hotline now 800-503-8625 800 503 800-503-8625 this is jerome clark author of ufo encyclopedia and other books you're listening to the paracast Diego, as you know, because this is a commercial radio show, they put strict limits on our timing. So we sometimes have to break and it's not being rude. I mean, I am rude, but that's not the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on with our discussions. Uh, we were talking about sort of the attitude uh, of UFOs by the media down there. Does it, you know, how seriously does the media take it? Or is it used to just, you know, as an attention getter in a lot of cases? Uh, the media, the Brazilian media, just get the serious stuff. The serious when something really, really important happens. The last thing that uh, the me- Brazilian media released was about the Tic Tac and Nimitz. It just for ten mi- ten seconds, twenty seconds. Because here in Brazil, we have so much other uh, news, economic and political, that UFO stuff it just no matter. It's not important. Right, right. I, I guess what I'm trying to get up, get at is what so up here we've sometimes called the giggle factor. So if you we're watching a news broadcast up here uh, in decades past, not so much anymore since the uh, Nimitz story broke. And, and but you would get news, you know, the newscasters would come on and they'd kind of have a, a bit of a grin on their face and kind of laugh it off as, you know, s- something not to take too seriously. But down there, you're saying when a, a news story comes on about it, it's covered in a very serious manner. Yeah, when you have something very serious, uh, mainly when you see something in the United States or Europe, uh, the Brazilian media shows it. And, and, and when we have some important case in Brazil, as we had in Virginia case, all the media took an, uh, got a taken of that. But... Nowadays, uh, we, we don't have any kind of case that get uh, the media attention. Now, of course, you're part of the media down there to some extent, at least that you're involved in the, in the UFO magazine. And you've got a very, very professional looking website, uh, by the way, as well. So what? Is the role of, uh, say, yourself in connection with other groups? Do you do you network with other groups down there as well as around the world? How do, how are groups organized down there? Like in, say, for example, the United States and Canada, they have the mutual UFO network. What do you guys have down there? Yeah, I'm, I'm a member of MUFON. I'm a, a research certificate by MUFON, and I'm also assistant of a director uh, national director of MUFON here in Brazil. AJ is the director. Uh, but here we have a, a, a very close contact with another, the UFO magazine Brazil. We have uh, a lot of contact and closer contact with groups in Brazil and uh, out of Brazil. Mainly the MUFON and the Cridovani in Uruguay and, and the groups in, in Argentina and Chile. And we have uh, this network working very, very good, very well, but we're still missing information because this information didn't get re- reach, didn't reach us, reach us because ha- the most part of the sightings uh, happened in, uh, in the north of Brazil and 
Well, uh, not everybody in Brazil has access to internet and they don't have intention to report it because they see it every day. The, the, the cycles in Brazil is, is daily. So when people see it uh, every day, they, they lost the, uh, the attraction of it. You're saying then that to them, UFOs are conventional. Yes, yes, that's right. Wow. Let me ask a question here, too, about this. What about cooperation among groups? That's a big problem here. And it's been through the years. Remember, MUFON was started as a splinter group from another organization now gone called APRO, Aerial Phenomena Research Organization. All right. So, right. So in South America, all these groups from different countries, are you sharing information or trying to? Yes, we do. Uh, the, uh, the UFO Magazine in Brazil, we make Congress every year and we always uh, invite uh, ufologists from another countries in South America. So we exchange information, we, we exchange data, and we exchange experiences. So I think that's the best way to get the phenomenon known in every, in every, in every country. How about contactees? Now, you know, we've heard that there are people that are still that consider themselves to be contactees. Uh, do you have any down in uh, the Brazil, South America that are fairly high profile? Yeah, we have uh, contacts. In the, I think that the most uh, known case in Brazil is Caran case. When uh, a couple, it was in, in the 70s, they got contact with a being named Karan, and they were contacted many times in their in their lives, and they had a message that we have to take care of the planet. So these two these two person in Brazil, they try to sp spread this this message, but it didn't work. Many people call them crazy, and they give it up to try to, to do it. Here, that's just a typical contactee. Those who claim, for the most part, to be in touch with UFO knots or aliens, greys, whatever, if they get a message, it's a message that we got to straighten up and fly right. That goes back long, long ago. In fact, I want to ask you about that, and maybe we can drift into it. Your book, you go back before the 1930s in covering UFO contacts back to the 19th century. You want to drop a couple of cases in on us? Yeah, uh, I have one case that I found it in the uh, National Archives in, in Brasilia. And this case was in 1871 uh, uh, when Augusto Lavenger uh was a, a monarchy high person the monarchy of brazil that saw a flying disc an oval shaped disc uh over the sky and well back at that time there's no helicopter or airplane and it was published in a newspaper and no one knows uh what it was this was the first case ever published about the airport brazil Do, do you how about ancient cases does does brazil's uh indigenous people or legends of people you know similar to the maya in central america uh is there any uh stories that date back legends mythology about ufos but yes yes the the, the folklore in brazil we have more than 80 uh, 80 18 uh uh entities or, or beings that come from uh, Brazilian folklore. We have the Boitata. What's, what's the Boitata? It's a snake uh, made by light that lives in uh, rivers or lagoons. So this Boitata, this is snake, come in and out from lakes. I think it's going to be, well, if, if, we, if we bring this uh, folklore to our world, we could see that was an alien probe 
or a, a UFO that come in and out of a lagoon or, or a river. We have many of these cases that relates lights uh, and folklore in Brazil. And the Indians believe that uh, we have been visited by aliens from another, another space, from another planet, since the beginning of the humankind. To indigenous uh, of Brazil, it's very normal to believe that we're not alone in the universe, that we have brothers uh, from another planet. Do you have much interest in so-called ancient astronauts, as we do, like Eric von Daniken and so forth? Yes, the, yes, it's perfect. We have been visited before. It's like a chariot of God. I find that really interesting, uh, what you were talking about with the snake and the lights. That reminds me of, out of, uh, there's the, the Christian Bible from the Middle East, and where they talk about, in there, uh, uh, something called the Leviathan. And yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm it, there again. It has these lights in its uh, in up near its nose, what they call it, uh, scales that arrows and and spears just bounce off of, and that no water can go in between. We're going to go into really more of that. Go into more of that in our next segment with Gene Randall, Jago. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great t-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Hey guys, it's Sue Cosner, your favorite sexual health expert, with another version of Ask the Pro. This month, I got a letter from Sandy in Seattle about an explosive bedroom secret she and her husband recently discovered. She writes... Dear Sue, my husband and I used to have a great life in the bedroom, but in the last few years, he has struggled. He's tried about everything, but nothing has worked. Then one day he came home and gave me a night I will never forget. He told me about this secret formula, Noxitril, that changed our life in the bedroom once and for all. Wow, Sandy, you beat me to it. I recommend Noxitril to every guy that struggles in the bedroom. It's the only one. Noxitril is all natural and works to increase blood flow fast. It's like that little blue pill on steroids. Noxitril has a special free bottle offer shipped discreetly to your door. To find out how to get your bottle of Noxitril, call 800-421-0954. 800-421-0954. Get your free bottle for a limited time. Call now. 800-421-0954. 800-421-0954. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Leviathan, that's the name of a comic book villain. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 if we say uh, the folklore in Brazil, the most part of it is connected by uh, lights and water, uh, lights that protect the forest, lights that, that uh, try to pro protect animals, and lights that say to the indigenous and the native people of the... Okay, uh, when we see the Brazilian folklore, we can find always okay uh when we see the brazilian folklore we always find lights and water 
and these lights always are protecting the forest, protecting the animals, and telling the natives and the indigenous of the place that they have to protect the planet. And we have a, a very special uh, being of Brazilian folklore, name it uh, the, uh, the, pink, the pink dolphin. What the pink, do pink dolphin is? Well, it's a fish, it's, a, 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 it's not a fish, it's a, it's a dolphin, of course, uh, that became a man and pregnant, pregnant uh, uh, and left a, a, a woman pregnant. And then he, re he returns to the, the river and, uh, the, and the lady got the, the baby in, the, in his belly uh, and three months later, he missed the, the kids. The kids simply disappeared. It's like the abduction of nowadays, when the people got abduction, abducted, and the aliens put some uh, petals on the ballet and then take it off. And we had it in the Brazilian folklore. That's very interesting because that's very, of course, reminiscent of some of the mermaid mythology, uh, where it, it's not simply just seeing something that resembles a beautiful woman out on a rock, but they have exactly that same mythology in some parts of Norse culture where uh, the sea creatures like a merman or a mermaid can actually come out of the water, take on human form and um, mate with people on the land and then later return to the sea. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're so far apart in in terms of distance you know you're way in the south and on the other side of the ocean and yet you've got an almost identical story i find that fascinating that's why i believe that we that, that we have been visited by by unsighted aliens uh in all all, all parts of the the world what about chupacabras well chupacabras is uh uh it's it's a very known in, in Costa Rica, but we had in Brazil, we had it in the middle of 90s, uh, 1990s, that we had in uh, Paraná State, in Sao Paulo State, we have a lot of cases, mysterious cases uh, of, you know, uh, chicken and something like that, that uh, was found dead without any trace of blood. And uh, I, I, Research of one of these caves, and uh, we didn't find uh, 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 an answer to what happened to those animals. It's very, very intriguing stuff. But something did happen to them, right? So they, they, they were did were the, did they just go missing, or were they was there evidence that they were somehow? Yeah, treated differently than a normal animal attack or human yeah, it was uh, not, poaching. It was not, yeah, it was not a normal at uh, animal attack. The the animal was found without blood, any any, any blood, and there's no there's no trace of uh, 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 something that could make it like a, a wild cat or something like that. Right, just that's very interesting. Animal. Yeah, just found that's... the animal without blood. Well, I mean, of course, that, that then again, now we have to look in at the whole concept of cattle mutilations because, you know, part of the reason they're, they're clearing some of the forest down there is to make grazing land for cattle and as well as to grow other things like coffee and so on, part of the economy. But has there been cattle mutilations down in South America like we have in uh, up in North America mainly? We never, we never had a cattle mutilation here in Brazil, never. But really? we had, yeah. But we have uh, in Argentina. Uh, oh. Andrea, Andrea Simondini is is uh, researching a lot of the cases that happened in in Argentina, cattle mutilation, but never happened in Brazil. And we we, we are the, the first in the world uh, to export meat, so we have a lot of cattle here in Brazil. Yeah, no catamulation. <laughs> that is really interesting in its own way. Uh, well, maybe I wonder, like, 
How is the industry there run? Is it run by private corporations or is it run by corporations from outside Brazil or is it government run or all of that? No, it's a private corpora- a corporation in Brazil. It's a Brazilian private corporation with, that uh, have a uh, meat, uh, meat uh, production here in Brazil. Interesting. So in uh, all of your studies on ufology, what is your favorite hypothesis for where these things come from? Or do you think maybe we're dealing with more than one uh, advanced race? I think that we, we're dealing with uh, more than one uh, type of race. Uh, I wrote uh, 11 books. One of these books, uh, one of my books is about uh, uh, alien typology. That uh, I, I made a research of eight years that uh, teach me that we have more than we have 72 types of aliens reported in uh, world ufology in, the world, in history. So I believe that they come from another planet using technology that we still don't know. Uh, maybe they from a parallel worlds or uh, universe or, or or the kind kind of uh, stuff. But I believe that they come from another planet. Sometimes people. They think that maybe UFOs aren't physical craft, that they're just sort of a projection of people's consciousness in some way. And we've we've heard stories of people that uh, go down to South America and engage in some of the uh, rituals with like ayahuasca, that sort of thing, where they will get into a state of altered consciousness and actually try to contact the uh, alien beings that way. Have, have you looked into any of that? Yeah, in Brazil we have this as well. Uh, we have many, many people that do this kind of stuff and try to get in touch with alien beings. Uh, well, but my opinion, uh, I don't believe it. Uh, I, I'm very scientific uh, researcher. Uh, I like to do my research based on on science and but in brazil we do have uh, many people that try to contact aliens after you know uh, some kind of uh indigenous uh drink or something like that right some sort of ritual thing i mean we've you know there's sort of a growing interest in that sort of thing so i was just wondering from and I, by the way, I appreciate that you want to look at UFOs from uh, a more objective point of view, and certainly that's the way that I am. I, but I, at the same time, I have to recognize that there are groups of people that are undertaking these sorts of activities, and then include that within the overall subject of ufology as part of a cultural phenomena. We've got Shago and Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. 
Extend your life with Extendivite. Extendivite really works. Just listen to what Wayne has to say. Extendivite. I have uh, been taking it for about two years, and I had uh, really bad heart palpitations. And since I've been taking it, I don't have any major episodes at all anymore. I'm 76 years old, and I still play competitive basketball. Well, of course, I've taken care of myself really good since I was 60, but... Um, Extendivite really helped the blood pressure, really helped the, I used to get really bad episodes of heart palpitations, just skipping beats and double beats. But also I wanted to tell you that I really appreciate your broadcast. They're just uh, really refreshing. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. What if you could cut your heating bills this winter with your existing wood-burning fireplace and not spend thousands doing it? You can with Great Wall of Fire Fireplace Grates. Our U.S. patented, made-in-America Wall of Fire Grates increase fireplace efficiency, eliminate fireplace smoke problems, and come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. See our grates in action and get free shipping from walloffire.com or call 800-274-7364. Fireplace heat without fireplace smoke. Walloffire.com. The Hebo Tea Club's original pure Pouty Arco Super Tea comes from the only tree in the world that fungus does not grow on. So it naturally has antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-infection, anti-inflammation, and anti-parasite properties. But maybe more importantly, the Hebo Tea Club's original pure Pouty Arco Super Tea builds corpuscles in the blood which carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen oxygen to develop and cancer happens to die in oxygen. The tea is great for healthy people and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. Dehebo Tea Club's original pure Pouty Arco Super Tea is only $34.95 plus shipping. Order now at ShopSuperTea.com or call 818-984-6100. That's ShopSuperTea.com, 818-984-6100, ShopSuperTea.com. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have three segments left, maybe cover a lot of things here. When we talk about abductions, we think here, I'm sure you know the names, the work of Bud Hopkins and Dr. David Jacobs. Yeah, I know. And they've written about UFO not or alien human hybrids. And Dr. Jacobs has said over the years that he feels that a race of hybrids that will slowly infiltrate our governments yeah. and take us over. How do you subscribe to that? What do you think? Well, I spoke with uh, Dr. David Jacobs uh, two years ago when we shared the same congress here in Brazil, in, in Belo Horizonte. I know David Jacobs. I talked to him by email. He's very in, he's facing a, a difficult situation now because he has a, a disease and uh, he's trying to cure that and I hope uh, he can have a success. But when I wrote that book about the alien typology uh, and, I and I told him that I found 72 72 types of aliens hit on Chago is impossible because uh, the only ones that are here are greys and they are trying to infiltrate a planet, replacing the human beings that die and they put, put another uh, hybrid uh, beings to replace, you know, a human born uh, kind of, of, of uh, civilization here. It's not, they're very 
intelligent person, uh, and that and that and I think that if he got that conclusion, it's because uh, he had something that made him to believe it. Uh, I I don't agree with him, but I respect a lot what he's thinking. I don't think they want to replace uh, the the humankind. I think they're here to learn more about us. You think they're here to learn more about us? That's really interesting. I, I tend to share that sentiment. What is it that makes you think that that's what they're doing? Well, because if they want to contact us, they had done it already. They had a lot of opportunity to do it. They want, if they want to destroy us, they had this, that opportunity as well. They are much, much advanced than, than us. They have more, uh, their weapons are much powerful than us. So they are here just to study us, to learn more about us. And they don't want to get disturbed doing that. They come here, do what they want to do, what they have to do, and leave. That's my opinion. Very simple. Do you have a, a lot of missing people down there in Brazil? Like up here, we've got people who write about missing persons, mysteriously missing persons, particularly from some of the national parks. The 404 books is an amazing book. Yeah, right. Like, does that happen down there as well? Yes, happen. happened. Uh, but we don't have like uh, the forest boards in, in, in Brazil as the American has, a federal board. We don't have here in Brazil. We have a lot of people that disappear. We have a, a, a person very known uh, in Brazil. I don't know if you know, if you know this person in the in, in United States. He was a MMA uh, fighter, Vitor Belfort. is a fighter of MMA that had lost uh, his sister 20 years ago, and she was never found. Never found 20 years ago. And we have a lot of people that disappeared in Brazil that there's no, uh, that was never found. I don't know about uh, abduction or killed by, by the, the violence here in, in Brazil. Interesting. Yeah, I imagine maybe down there, there would be more chance of people disappearing from foul play than, you know, maybe in North America or Europe, but... Or is there? I mean, I, I don't know the country that well, but what do you think? Do you think that, that most of these appearance, disappearances can be explained fairly easily? Yeah, I think. I think it's about violence or, or missing. People just, uh, many people just want to leave and then change it, their lives and just disappear. But many, many people uh, disappear because of violence. It's quite sure. So looking at it uh, from your perspective as someone who wants to consider it as objectively as possible, what are we dealing with then? Are we dealing, in your opinion, with actual craft, as in transports of some kind? So the UFOs are, are something that are engineered and designed to move through space and time? Yes, I believe. I believe they have the, the technology to move uh, into space from galaxy to galaxy or from planet to planet. And they have this, this technology or they have found a way to, to travel uh, in a space that we, we still haven't found. That's why I believe they come from another planet, from another solar system or from another galaxy. So you're essentially, you're one of the, uh, the ETH people, mainly. Uh, so, so interstellar hypothesis seems to be the most reasonable for you then. Maybe there's alien bases, maybe underwater somewhere. Uh, what about the idea, and this seems to be growing as well in, in, in terms of the whole concept of Gaia, the planet, and that the planet itself is alive and that something in the planet in itself is sort of inducing people to experience ufos from a subjective perspective do you think there's much merit in that or do you think that's more leading us in the wrong direction well uh well i'm, I'm i try to have an open mind you know uh because we don't have the the, the answer we can dismiss uh any kind of theory 
or a hypothesis. But uh, I, I try to, to, to think, um, you know, more scientific uh, as, best as possible I can. Uh, so I believe that this kind of, you know, uh, Earth uh, made me believe that something like that, or I, I didn't figure out how this could work. I still believe that we have been visited uh, from beings from another planet. It's easier, you know, it's not easy to travel in space, but it's something more easier to happen that uh, we have something more, much more huge and complicate that's my opinion but as i said i'm I, I open mind i can change my mind in in, in in time why do you think that they then they don't just openly come out and broadcast to the people of earth that they are here why do they seem to play these games with us where we all know they're there but they won't give us the evidence to prove it to anybody as I, as I said, uh, they don't want to. They are here to some kind of agenda that we don't know what, what it is. They come here and do what they have to do. Uh, abduction or collect water or collect stones or collect minerals or something like that or, or collect uh, parts of animals uh, and go home. They just want to study they want to drive us crazy, Diego. <laughs> we got more to come with Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I started fighting the IRS over 40 years ago when they tried to seize my mother's house. I sued the IRS and won. I beat the IRS then, and I've been beating them ever since. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I've helped thousands of people deal with tax problems they thought might never be solved. I can help you too. If you owe taxes you can't pay, don't wait another day. There's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. USA Radio News with Wendy King. The full House will vote next week on the two articles of impeachment against President Trump approved by the Judiciary Committee Friday along party lines. Looking ahead at a Senate trial, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told Fox News. Everything I do during this, I'm coordinating with White House counsel. We'll be working through this process, hopefully in a fairly short period of time, in total coordination uh, with the White House Counsel's Office and the people who are representing the President. I'm going to coordinate with the President's lawyers, so there won't be any difference between us on how to do this. I'm going to take my cues from the, from the President's lawyers. Tennessee Democrat Congressman Steve Cohen questions how the GOP remains in lockstep with President Trump. I've never been in a Republican uh, caucus. They may just take Kool-Aid communion every day. This is USA Radio News. Balance of Nature. Changing the world one life at a time. You guys have a great product, and I tell my friends about it. And I was actually talking to a guy the other day I just met, and he, he takes them. So you put out a great product, and I want to thank you and your, your organization. I just started using it, and my family's already seen the difference. And I have uh, health issues. I have fibromyalgia, asthma, but all of a sudden everything's clearing up, and I'm feeling better, and my skin's better. My brother said I look 10 years younger already. Wow. Okay. My vision is clear. I already see the difference. People are seeing the difference, and my doctor is seeing the difference. 
Experience the balance of nature difference for yourself. For a limited time, you can receive a 30% discount and free shipping on your first preferred order of balance of nature. Call 800-2468-751 or go to balanceofnature.com and use discount code USA. When you have a pain in the neck, a real pain in the neck, back, shoulder, or legs, you now have two convenient choices to get fast relief without taking another pill. Because now, Sunny Bay heating wraps and pillows are available at both Amazon and Walmart. Yes, see Sunny Bay's four and a half to five star customer reviews on Amazon.com or Walmart.com. Our microwavable heat wraps, heatable neck pillows, and extra large body wraps are designed better for perfect support. Support where and when you need it. Even while driving, Sunny Bay wraps will not burn and stay balanced to provide soothing hot or cold therapy to help treat temporary or chronic pain. And the best part, Sunny Bay quality products start at under $20. Join thousands of happy customers and see why Sunny Bay products have a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. It's easy. Click Amazon or Walmart and search today for Sunny Bay. Hi, this is Joshua P. Warren, author of The Poor Man's Paranormal, and you're listening to The Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We used to say in The Paracast that we shouldn't even try to understand the motives of an alien race, especially if they are physically, culturally very, very different from us. How can we know what they want to do? Maybe we're just playthings to them. They're playing games with us. Or I think even Stan Friedman had suggested at one time, you know, they come here for vacation. Or maybe it's it's a training exercise of some sort. Yes. uh, When when I go to the Congress in in my speech, uh, I I tell them, we don't know what they're here for. Uh, maybe they are on vacation. Maybe they are students. Well, today our visit is uh, is to a planet called Earth, uh, or I don't know how they call our planet. We go on a planet where there's a, a bunch of kind of uh, animals that fly in something like you know airplanes. Uh, we don't know why they are here, and don't know what they want here, and. But I'm sure that they don't want to get uh, seen. They don't want to, to us to see, see them. If they do, they already had landed in, in a White House garden, you know. Right, but at the same time, they have flown over the White House, right? They yeah. had jets chasing them over the White House back in the 50s. And, and it's so true. it's not like if they wanted not to be seen at all, we could presume that they probably would never have to be seen. We wouldn't know they're here at all. And yet, for some reason, they want to play these games of cat and mouse with Air Force jets, or they want to to try to communicate some message to us. Like we already know. Why don't they? Why don't they tell us something we don't know? We already know the planet is in trouble. We know we should treat each other better. We know we shouldn't go to war, and that nuclear weapons are really dangerous. We don't need the aliens to tell us this. And yet they seem to think that they should be able to come down here and reveal this information to us as if it's some kind of a new revelation and that we should just take it for granted then that whoever tells us that believes they really had contact with an alien. Well, now, now the thing I also wonder about, too, here is if we have an advanced alien race, if they're going to visit or channel this message of peace and brotherhood, why can't they just come down here and do something? I always say the aliens, if they exist, are feckless. Yeah, but remember that, uh, in my opinion, we we not have been visited by only one uh, race of uh, alien beings. I catalog 72 aliens. So they, they have their reason to be here. Someone to study someone to play jogging cat, someone to come here just to see someone, some, some kind of uh, race is just on vacation. We don't know. Uh, but in my opinion, none of 
the 72 type of races have the, the one to, to stay here and, and land and make like uh, the day still stood and say, oh, we are here, we want to be your friends or we want to fight to you, to your, uh, uh, of your planet. They, they don't want to show. They show sometimes, sometimes people see if, if they want to show everyone that looked at the sky probably would see a UFO. Now, the one thing I wanted to bring out, since you mentioned the day the Earth stood still and its message, in the wake of that movie, some of the early contactees appeared in the U.S. and they echoed the message and the silvery uniform worn by Klaatu, played by Michael Rennie, but they never brought the other acts, the dire message that if you don't straighten up, we're going to take things into our own hands and get rid of you in the interests of galactic space. But the other thing to bring in mind here is that some people and some religions say this, UFOs are demonic. They must be representing the devil or some kind of evil race. They mean to do us harm regardless of what they tell us. What's your perception of things like that? Yes, it's one of theory. One of the theories that people claim that they are devils. If they believe in angels, they believe in devils. I don't think they are devils. If there's some uh, episode, there's some cases that they are not so well. But uh, if they were the devil itself, well, we were no, on a celestial, celestial battle and we are still looking for the angels. It's a, it's a theory. It's a theory. I find it a little odd though that the as you were saying if there's all these different races you'd think one of them would say something one of them would make it known one of them would go hey you know we are here to to take over and yet they're all elusive or they're all trying to keep us from knowing exactly what they're about and to me and this is just an opinion here, but to me, it suggests that maybe we're not really dealing with races that are completely different, but that they're at least connected somehow, or maybe that the phenomena itself wants us to think that there are a whole bunch of different ones when really they're not. Maybe they're like how we are on our earth here. There are a whole bunch of different countries. And it, with a whole bunch of different cultures, and they all have their own space program, and maybe they're all coming here from the same place. Really? Yeah, it's not it's not wrong with you or what you're saying. Uh, remember that when when you see when you when you uh, see something uh, unusual, you you are in a high stress. You, imagine if you see an alien in front of you, a strange being in front of you. What you see looks like a third eye, must be a, a helmet. Or we should say, if you say, well, it looks like a frog, it's not a frog, it's not a helmet and, and, a, and a green clothes, very tight clothes. So maybe they, they are from the same planet. We are the same planet, we have very different people in our planet. So what you think is not, it's not unco un un unusual. It's not and is, I mean, even here on Earth, um, you know, do you say, well, they all have different shaped ships. Well, yes. look at how many different kinds of airplanes and cars we have, you know, maybe, maybe they just have several different kinds. You're right. You're all right. You know, we, we can't maybe assume, in other words, that just because this UFO is a saucer and this one is a sphere, that they come from different planets. They might have been both made in the same factory. Yes, but maybe you're assuming here that what you're seeing, Randall, is precisely what is there. And as soon as there is any change to that, either because we interpret it that way, because we can't accept what they look like, or they are deliberately making themselves look this way, so we accept them. You have sure. to think here, if we have a technology hundreds or thousands of years ahead of us, where would it lead them? Could we even conceive where they'd go? Well, they could make them look like anything we want. It could be, it could, in other words, Gene, I think you and I are both kind of on the same page in the sense that if they're that far ahead, we could be dealing with just a single unified 
phenomena that can make itself appear to be anything it wants. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, I, I share uh, your, your opinion. Uh, well, I, I found 72 types, but maybe uh, they're from the same planet uh, or, you know, uh, the same reason to be here. But uh, I still think that they, want, they don't want to show up. I don't know why. I don't know why. But uh, in my opinion, they don't want to show up. Well, maybe like you were saying, if they're studying us, this is one of the things that I, I sort of put out there. You know what, Randall, why don't you pick it up on the next segment? Randall has a response to that. What are the UFOs doing? Are they studying us, testing us? I hope not preparing to serve them, if you recall that Twilight Zone show, to serve man. No. Jago, Gene, and Randall, you're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low cost plans put your sites on high performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. This is Fred. Uh, hi, I'm Fred. Fred's a repeater. I tend to repeat. Fred has a business. I do have a business. And a problem. Fred repeats the same tired advertising over and over, and now it doesn't work. Over and over. But Fred is about to see a vision. I'm seeing a vision. Advertising on the Genesis Communications Network is the smart way for Fred to reach his potential customers with the most affordable national advertising rates, period. Get started today with GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. Just email advertise at GCNlive.com. We all hear the stories in the news. The good guy uses a gun to protect his family from criminals, and he's the one arrested. The legal system is not fair, and responsibly armed Americans are political targets. So here's how you can take a simple and rewarding journey to complete self-defense confidence. Simply text GCN to 87222 to discover how the USCCA can give you the training, education, legal, and financial protection you need to truly protect the people you love. Don't risk everything and leave your family vulnerable. Now it's time to prepare and protect yourself. So if you're ready to take your next step as a responsibly armed American, you're ready to truly become your family's ultimate protector. Text GCN to 87222. Discover your life-saving USCCA member benefits today. Again, that's text GCN to 87222. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. 
As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, summarizing the rates and benefits from financially strong insurers. That's right, annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling today. 800-932-1789. 800-932-1789. That's 800-932-1789. Producers have the appropriate licenses for the products they offer. Increased income is possible using strategies suited to your goals and may require buying multiple annuities and holding them full term. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. Well, when they have cooked human, that's grisly. Mm. Many, many people uh, uh, didn't like to think that we are lab rats. Maybe we are lab rats for them. Well, exactly. This is where I was going before the break in that on one hand, we could say, well, how could we possibly fathom the mind of an alien being? Well, there are a lot of common things in the universe, mainly what stuff is made out of and how things work. In other words, things in the universe don't work just according to the way we want them to, regardless of what species we are. It works in a certain way. That way is described by science. Just like we can assume that there are the same elements out hundreds of light years away from Earth, we can assume that the same rules apply to those and that whatever intelligence is going to be studying those is going to have to discover the same rules as well. And therefore, we'd have this common language called science. And one of the things that science does when it creates an experiment is it tries to keep the experimenter out of the experiment so that it doesn't contaminate it. So we tend to do this in the wild quite a bit. Say when we're studying animals, we'll build blinds and screens and film animals from a, from a distance so that they don't behave any differently than they normally would. But once in a while, we sneak in and we grab one and we study it really close. So there seems to be kind of a parallel there. What do you think? Yes, your speech got me goosebumps because it's the same thing that I think. It's perfect. I think just like you said. So uh, I think that they're here to study us and sometimes they have to come to see, well, let's see how uh, our lab rats are doing. And they came. And they came, they see, and they come to see what we're doing. And they, well, we did it right. Or, well, what we, what we created uh, is not so well. Let's change it. What you said is perfect to me. Let me look at the farther picture here. Now, people like me have been doing this for many, many, many years. Did I say many years? And people like you, Diego, are young whippersnappers. You're kind of new (laughs) to the game. And we're all coming up with some similar things. Do you think we'll ever get to the bottom of it? Or maybe they don't want us to? Well, nowadays, in the present, they don't want to. I'm quite sure that uh, I will not I'll not be alive here to see this, you know, final contact. I, I'm probably my son and my daughter will see it, not me. How old are your kids? Well, my son has 10 years old and my, my daughter has five years old. Okay, so we're assuming then, not assuming your age because I don't know it, 44. 44. Okay, you're a young whippersnapper, like I said. So if we assume you're going to live to 80 or 90 or more, that means it could be five decades. Your kids will be middle-aged before the answers come. Yes, I do believe that. I believe that. Well, if, if, if uh, I'm, I'm still alive, which you said it's going to be the sherry of my cake, as you said in Brazil. I'm not so optimist on it. Well, at this point, it's hard to be optimistic. Yeah, it's hard. Well, then again, I mean, you know, we've talked about the discoveries of all these exoplanets, guys like Seth Shostak saying that we will probably detect an intelligent civilization within, you know, the next maybe dozen years or so. And we've got the turnaround in the the press with uh, covering all this Nimitz stuff. So, you know, maybe, maybe we're getting closer than we think. Maybe, you know, maybe we're just getting pessimistic. 
Oh, it's gonna be fantastic to me because I, I, I I'm in ufology not to make people believe in what I believe. I'm an ufologist to find my uh, the answers answers uh, to my questions. I'm not here to make you believe uh, in what I want you. Uh, I'm just following I, what, I, what I need to know. Well, that's a really kind of responsible approach. But we do seem to have kind of a growing contactee movement now, a renewal in some of the contactee movement. And uh, there, there are people who think that it could become the next uh, religion, in fact, uh, you know, a major one. Uh, Diana Walsh Pasalka up here and uh, has written a whole book about that. What do you think about that whole side of the the cultural side of it, where people think these are, you know, our space brothers and and the next thing you know, they're going, you know, the, going down the Church of Zenu. Well, when we got this contact, uh, our culture is going to change 100 percent. We will must change it because we, are, we will not be selfish anymore. We now we will have other other beings from another planets in our planet. So we have we, we will have to have a uh, open mind. It's, it's an obligation. I, I guess what I'm saying is like okay, let's suppose that the the great mothership comes down. You know, we'd have people like yourself, myself, uh, Gene probably included as well, who would be going. Wow, you know, they're here. There it is. There's the ship. And then you'd have other people that would be going up and offering gifts and bowing down and saying, you know, please, the miracle, we need, uh, you know, this, that, and start and and start venerating it and deifying it as some sort of god or perhaps, you know, the end of the world, some Armageddon event. Yeah, when, when the, uh, this contact happened, as I said, we're going to change everything in our lives. You're going to see uh, a birth of a new, new religions, a, a birth of a new government. Uh, we will not uh, have more boundaries of countries. We will be work as a human beings, a planet as a whole. We will not be like more president of Brazil, president of United States. No, you're going to must have a president a president of uh, Earth, we will be not North American or Brazilians or Chinese. We will be humans. Well, that's that, like the Star Trek universe, isn't it? Yeah. Where Earth <laughs> is completely unified. There's a federation. And instead of countries, we have planets. Yes, I think it's going to be this way. If you find another beings in the universe, you've got a bigger thought that we have today. Well, maybe that's the whole reason that they don't want them out. I mean, this is a very Stanton Friedman-ish thing to say, too. I mean, he was... That's... <laughs> I, I, I Stanton friedman I, I knew him. I knew him. He's a very... He was a, a fantastic person. Right. And, and of course, like he used to say, well, you know, that the politics is the only game in town, right? For us, if uh, these, like you say, if they came down and all of a sudden we were looking at having to do a one-world government and all these people in power going back to the beginning of the program, who are doing things to mess up our planet, they'd all have to kind of give up their little piece of turf, wouldn't they, for the greater cause? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think that they will want to do it, but they will be forced to do it. They will not have another, another way. They will have to uh, leave the power for one person that is going to rule uh, our planet. Well, I say fat chance they do that, but unless they're forced to. Diego, tell our listeners where, if they want to know more about what you do, where they can find your stuff. You can find my book on Amazon, Ufo Contacts in Brazil, on Amazon.com. And I have a Facebook page and a channel on YouTube. Just look for Chiquetti, T-Y-C-C-H-E-T-T-Y, and you can find me. You can find us on Twitter if you look for the Paracast. Don't forget to take a look at us on Facebook. There is a Paracast community. There is a Paracast group, and that's the way it is. We also have a second radio show called After the Paracast, which is available only if you are a member of the Paracast Plus. What's that? It's a way for you to get a version of the show free of the network ads. How about that? And you get better quality audio, enhanced audio, so everybody else sounds better. 
I never change. I'm a constant, for better or worse. <laughs> the After the Paracast <laughs> podcast, of course, is something you never know what's going to come next. We have interviews. We have color commentary. We have William Puckett, our special correspondent with recent UFO sightings. We invite you to check theparacast.plus, theparacast.plus for more. Diego Cicchetti, we enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, the invitation. And I hope you like it. And I hope you enjoy the book. And I'm here. The Paracast. Featuring Gene Steinberg is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in the Paracast. <laughs>